day all of our listeners out there in internet land you are tuned into another podcast of uh, copa radio johannesburg we are introducing a new host and a new segment today welcome jody hello what is the name of your show that you're going to be doing it is called music from the movies music from the movies can you tell us something a little bit about uh, what it is that you're going to be doing well i'm basically going to be focusing on um the composers that write really meaningful um, melodies for the movies as okay. soundtracks and all of that. So so. In, in the business of scores, basically. Yeah, basically. Okay, fantastic. So what is the composer's name that you'll be focusing on today? Um, today I'm going to be talking about Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. Yes, he is a German film composer born on the 12th of September. Okay. Just a fun fact. Um, and he started, like many before him, um, to write music by doing advertising jingles. Okay. Um, and then he collaborated with an English new wave band, The Buggles, I don't know if anyone's heard of them. I have. <laughs> on their LP, um, The Age of Plastics, I think it was called. Yeah. Um, coincidentally, this LP included the famous 80s hit, which I think everyone knows, Video Killed the Radio Star. This was um, also coincidentally the first music video um, to be aired on MTV. Very ironic if you consider the actual name of the yeah. song as well. <laughs> they must have known. Important of the time. Anyways, <laughs> what else can you tell me? Um, he later filmed a, a collaboration with famed composer and mentor Stanley Myers. Um, this collaboration introduced him into the world of film music. Um, and together they, they both basically started up a London-based recording studio. Right. And they worked for... They worked on material for um, the critically acclaimed, um, what's it called, My Beautiful Laundrette, okay. among many others. Uh -huh. um, in addition, they sort of made progress in fusing orchestral music with modern advances in oh, okay. technology at the time. Okay. So that also influenced the soundtracks that were going to follow. Obviously making it a lot easier to... to get very big orchestral yeah. scores onto the silver screen in as short a time as possible. I'm yeah, okay. I, I, I assume so. All right. um, and then leading up to the 1990s, um, Zimmer created scores for movies like uh, Black Rain, Days of Thunder, okay. um, my personal favorite, The Gladiator. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and these, I think they've, they, they've started to be one of his best works, some of his best works rather. Yeah. Um, he also created music for uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Ooh. The Da Vinci Code, and The Dark Knight Rises, so okay. I think he knows his stuff. All very monumental, amazing scores as yeah. well, so <laughs> he knows what he's doing. And the nice thing is that um, even though he's incredibly successful, um, he's taken the time to share the knowledge that he's gained and start mentoring other younger composers like John Powell and Harry Gregson Williams. Okay. So they all sort of, I think they do a sort of collaborative Thing where they just all work on scores together of various, uh, um, yeah, movies. Did, did any of his protégés um, do scores for m movies that we know? Uh, I think John Powell uh, scored P.S. I Love You. Okay. Uh, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay. And Harry Gregson Williams, I think he helped out on Shrek. Okay. But I think he was the main person in Narnia. The main composer. The main person it's who always composed always the music in Narnia. <laughs> Is a conductor as well, I wonder. I imagine. I don't, I'm not too sure, actually. We I'm sure it's quite common for these for these composers to conduct like their, their scores as well. Yeah, I imagine it would be a perk in the job to be able to do that rather sure. than trying sure. to Wave explain to someone else. Around. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's quite interesting because um, I don't think enough people recognize the magnificence that composers bring to films and how it, it sort of adds to the, the end feeling of the film. You know, of course. you sort of, you connect more with um, the film according to the music. So of course, I mean it's a no-brainer. Like um, any any movie, any movie that any of us have ever known or loved, like try and watch that movie without any of the music, and it's and not the same. It's dead, man. <laughs> yeah. It's just a, a soulless fish without any melody, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So that's sort of why I decided to do this. Um, okay. And. Yeah, I think yes. that's all we can say for today. Does that bring us to a conclusion then, Jodie? I think so. Okay, think fantastic. Thank you very much for doing your very first segment, Music at Thank the Movies. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, no problem, no problem. And um, all of our listeners out there, if you are interested in hearing about some more interesting facts re regarding uh, movies and music and music at movies <laughs> and verse visa and what have you, then please tune in for our next segment of Music at the Movies with Jodie 
and uh, I don't know if she has a, a, a cool DJ name yet. Not yet. No, not no. Yet. Not no. yet. <laughs> maybe the time will never come. <laughs> maybe the, may, maybe that this is who you were meant to be. This is who I was meant to be. Your yeah, actual yeah. given birth name. Probably. Nothing <laughs> to be ashamed of. No. <laughs> no not at all. Could be worse. No, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, everyone out there, thanks again for joining us for another installment of Copa Radio Johannesburg. Please interact with us on uh, various forms of social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that, you will be seeing the handles relevant to these social media sites upon the slideshow that plays while you listen to this wonderful podcast. In other news, uh, have a good one, and um, we will see you guys next time.